Before we begin, take a moment to think about how you would feel if you functioned within a world where communicating in your language isn't available for you. You're hurt, sick, maybe disoriented, and now you're in a hospital and you need help, but no one knows how to communicate with you. However, many deaf people can agree that deafness is not a barrier, but it quickly becomes one when effective communication access is not available. How you might feel. Some of you probably thought about how lost you may feel, cut off or overwhelmed. Some of you think of how afraid, confused, frustrated, or even angry you would be. These are all intense emotions. This is the reality of many deaf people who come in through your doors. Thank you for taking the time to imagine what we may feel. The following information is here to help you better understand what we experience as deaf people and to provide equitable access to medical care. So we are not left in silence. We are here to support you at Rocky Mountain Health Plans in providing the training your providers need to support their deaf patients, families, and loved ones. One of the most important things to remember is that not all deaf people are the same. Some deaf people identify as capital D deaf, while others identify as lowercase d deaf, and the spectrum also includes many other identifiers such as hard of hearing, hearing loss, and for a few people, hearing impaired. By the way, it's okay to call us deaf. That's who we are. More deaf people prefer it instead of hearing impaired. So we encourage you to use deaf or hearing loss instead. To identify as capital D deaf is to be a part of the deaf culture. And let me tell you, this culture is rich. Deafness is a way of life complete with a shared language, American Sign Language. There's social norms, expectations, humor, art, and more. There are multi-generational deaf families. It is our primary identity and we are proud of it. People who identify as lowercase d deaf generally identify more with their hearing loss than with the culture. While this is not always true for everyone in this group, they generally do not always sign, are not an active part of the deaf community, are likely to have experienced hearing loss later in life, or have had little to no exposure to the deaf community while growing up. They may also choose to use their residual hearing to interact with the world around them by using hearing aids or the cochlear implant. Often you can tell they have a hearing loss when they speak louder than normal or when watching television they have the volume on extra loud. Even elderly folks experience a gradual decline in their hearing. We are not all the same. That means that accommodations, communication preferences, and personal experiences vary widely. Some may know ASL, some may prefer to speak, some may prefer to write. Members in either groups may speak or know sign language, use hearing aids or cochlear implants, or share other commonalities. When you meet a deaf person, don't make any assumptions on how to communicate with them. Have a conversation and ask them what works best and what they need to communicate with you. In turn, it allows you to do your best job. Empower them to show you. They'll feel more comfortable sharing the best ways to communicate with them.